two, one. Boom, and welcome to the Big Honker Podcast from the Metropolis of Knox City, Texas. I am Jeff Stanfield. This podcast is brought to you by Dirty Duck Coffee. And on the line with us today, because I'm going to skip out on the old world-famous Andy Shaver bullshit. Appreciate it. From Jewel, Iowa, the one and only Cooper Olmstead. Cooper, how you doing? I'm good. How you guys been? I'm excited to talk to you. You're uh, you maybe you can answer some of our questions. I, I should have made this a Looking Glass Duck Club since you and Logan are big butt buddies. No, that's oh yeah, you that's could've. ugly. What's ugly about that? They're good friends. Butt buddies. That means good front term. You, you young people and all y'all sexual deals. Y'all just y'all don't get it these days. <laughs> when I was younger, we didn't have fucking guys going in girls' bathrooms. We didn't have sex change operations, and a boy knew he was a boy and a girl was a girl can't say that about you so cooper tell us about canada what's going to happen this year well from the sounds of it it's going to open um they're going to open up the border august 9th for u.s residents um and uh like yeah u.s residents and then not until september 9th or 7th or something like that i believe it is for any other you know countries and stuff so it sounds like we're a go unless they decide to close it again right before you know, September first. On, on a scale of one to ten, what do you think the chances are of an American shooting geese on September twenty first in Canada? How confident? How confident on one to ten? Oh, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> that's like I was saying about five. It's about a coin flip. So, <laughs> oh, I mean, it all sounds good now, you know, and it. I mean, it does like it. Everything's going to open. They're lifting restrictions now, and but I just don't know if it's going to stay that way. I'm on a three right now. I'm well, three out of three 10. out of ten. My three is for guys like you that have businesses up there, and that makes me want to be a ten for you guys. First of all, I don't trust our government. I damn sure don't trust the Canadian government. And then they're putting all these mask mandates in everywhere. I saw in California yesterday in San Diego. If you go to a restaurant, you have to be vaccinated even going to a restaurant. I just I just don't. I, we're going the opposite way again at the wrong time, and I don't. I don't have a lot of faith in it. I'm at a six point six. Well, that's what we would expect Good. from a fence sitter like you. What? You're not. You don't commit on shit. So we would expect a fucking 6. Cooper's 6. out of five. He's not a fence sitter. He's got shit up there. He's got money and tied a, up. You're Yours out of, You said five, right, Cooper? Yeah, He's, I wish I. 50. I would like to say ten, but I just don't know what's going to happen. Six point six. I think I'm confident. <laughs> That it will happen, but I'm leaving room for doubt. There will be people up there. May, uh, you know, like you said. Now, last year, could you have gotten across because you had a business up there? Yes. Yep. I could have got across, but it wouldn't have done us any good. You know? Right. Um, <laughs> what, are, what, what, what are the bookings like? Are people that have got... I'm, I'm assuming you still had openings until this happened. Am I wrong on that or right? Or did y'all... Were y'all yes. Okay. Did. Yep. Since this happened, has the phone been ringing off the hook? Or are people still pretty apprehensive? Well, it's kind of it's kind of gone both ways, I would say. Um, you know, because now everybody's excited to get back up there, so we are getting a lot more interest. You know, guys calling, wanting to book updates, but then we're also getting on the flip side of that guys that don't want to get vaccinated, right? So they're, that they're scared of the vaccination and don't want to get vaccinated, and so you know we're not going because we have to be vaccinated. So it's kind of a double edged sword, but I would say. The people that are interested, you know, in the bookings and on that side, it outweighs the guys, you know, that don't want to get vaccinated. That's just happened for a couple of them. And, I mean, I can't blame them either, you know. I, if somebody doesn't want to get vaccinated don't believe in it, that's fine with me. And we really shouldn't be telling them to get vaccinated. But Yeah, I'm not, I'm not getting vaccinated right now. Now, that, in a year from now, if it shows that people are – dicks ain't falling off and shit, I might get a vaccination. But right now, I, I'm kind of scared to get one. And that's the only reason I would have gotten one before is to travel. Well, it doesn't. <clears throat> excuse me, it doesn't help anything because now it's the new Delta that's hurting people, and evidently this vaccination doesn't do anything to keep you from getting the Delta variant. I yeah, mean, there's Frank Reich, head coach of Indianapolis. He's he's fully vaccinated. He's got COVID. He's at home right now. So, in that regard, like I've already had the first COVID. So I mean, if I get the Delta, then. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe it will put me down. I mean, I'm the same way. I had it the first time. I'm not scared to get it a second time. I hope I don't, but and I may die from this shit. Who knows? Um, so what 
there was news last week about uh, the U.S. side. Not was that just the yeah. U.S. side not letting Canadians across the border? Right. Correct. So I so when all that stuff came out, it came out what last Monday, I think, that they were going to open the border starting August 9th. And then on that on Wednesday, so last Wednesday, they were going to come out with like the official release, you know, with the guidelines and stipulations and stuff. And then that night is when they announced that the border was going to remain closed on the U.S. side. So I was all panicking, worrying. And I emailed our lawyer and he said, you know, this does not pertain to you because you and your clients coming in are still U.S. citizens. So that does not pertain to us because you're crossing the border and then coming back in. What a f- So the border is not closed to U.S. Citizen, citizens or permanent residents of the U.S. What a fucking mess. Now, I mean, you've got to have a fucking lawyer to make heads or tails of if you can get across or not get across and what hoops you got to jump through when you get across. So. Oh, yeah. So you ha- right now the rules are you have to do you have to be fully vaccinated to get into Canada or can you yep, yep. fully vaccinated? Fully vaccinated. Yep. Just a single dose of the double dose vaccine won't work. So you have to be fully vaccinated. You have to have proof of your vaccination. You have to upload that proof onto Arrive Canada. It's some app that they have now. Um, so that has to all be on there, I think, two weeks before you travel. Uh, you have to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours of travel. So, so what is this? what does this certified COVID test, is it like a card or just a signed piece of paper? Yeah, it's honestly just a card that's handwritten. But- and so that was like, after like talking to our lawyer and stuff, he said that that's going to be a problem, he thinks, because like all of Canada has a centralized database for their COVID vaccines. Well, the U.S. doesn't. It does state by state. So, I mean, like like Iowa has one. So, like, they could look it up and see if I actually have gotten it. But it's just like a card that you hand wrote, you know, the time and date and what vaccine you got. And so they're, you know, they're saying that they can be forged and all that stuff. But I think there, there's not a centralized database as of now, but there is like a state one. So guys can – or the government could go in and check to see if guys have actually gotten I, it. I saw a guy today openly on Facebook wrote – does anybody know where I can buy a COVID card? I'm not getting the shot, but I need to get a deal. It's, you know, and it's going to happen all over the place, especially because somebody okay. else told me that their mother went and got one, and they gave them a blank piece of paper. Just fill that out when you get home. Right. Do you know if what the penalty is if you get caught with a fake COVID card? Because I and Jeff and I got in a fucking argument the other day about it. I on, <laughs> I mean it's it's the news. A lady <laughs> in California got caught with a fake COVID card and she got brought up on federal charges. And Jeff, Mr. Fucking attorney that never went to law school is saying, well, it's not a federal offense. Well, I'm just telling you what I read. I'm not saying you, you said it's a lie. I'm saying that it's not a federal offense. It hadn't been made into law yet, but I'm wondering what's going to happen in Canada. If you get caught, number one, I don't know how you're going to get caught, but say you do, they find out this is not real. Well, forging documents is against the law. That is against the law. So there, there's, I mean, I could see where she could get in trouble. It's just not a federal law. It's not. It's not a federal document. It's a state document. He just said that. Do you know what's, have they said if there's going to be any penalty if you get caught crossing the border with a fake COVID card? I have not heard anything. I'm sure there will be. My guess is they'd probably ban you from Canada, you know, something like that. Mm. Fine you, ban you. Yeah, I'm sh- there, there's got to be some kind of repercussions if you do that. Just, I just don't know how severe, how severe it's going to be. I mean, it's not like you're giving them a fake passport, right? Because that's a federal document, and a state deal. These 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 tests are mandated by the states. I mean, I've seen that. I'm assuming that by now you're vaccinated if you're planning on going into Canada, but yep. I've seen these COVID cards, and I mean, it's just a fucking piece of paper. It's nothing special. Yeah, it There's is. no watermark on it. There's no stamp on it. It's nothing. It's just you, anybody. <laughs> them motherfuckers are going to be selling them some bitches and them coon asses in southern Louisiana when go to Canada. They're going to be selling them motherfuckers at the grocery stores. <laughs> yeah, I think that's part of the reason they're doing that Arrive Canada deal, and it has to be in two weeks prior. So then your name pops up, you know, here's your card. Well, now they can go back and check into the, you know, whatever state you live in and see if you actually received it. Now, I don't know how things work in big city America because we live in small town America. 
But I'm telling you, in small town America, you can find some nurse that works at a doctor's office to get you the paperwork and put you in the system, probably. Mm. Well, I would. I don't know. I bet you you can in a small town. In a big town, you're not going to. But it's just like getting a doctor's note. You can get a doctor's note if you're friends with a doctor. A lot of times, I can write you a note on something. Right. And there's a, and the thing. This is what's crazy about this whole deal is, is it's split with doctors and nurses. Most everybody I know that works in the medical field, they're not. They won't get a shot. Did you? You didn't have any bad reactions to your vaccine, did you? Nope, I didn't have any. But like my my wife is a nurse. She's an RN, and she hasn't got it yet. Really? That, that's and, that, and she probably doesn't want to, does she? No, she's she's just like she's like I'm not scared of it, but. You know, it's kind of like everybody else. I don't know what it's going to do, what the long-term effects are. So, right now, I'm content not you having You may be it. shooting blanks now because they say that's – I don't know how they know that, but they say that's one of the side effects. But I might. if you uh, – if you were if, – if getting into Canada didn't hinge on that vaccine, would you have gotten it? Probably, probably not. Probably not. So, I mean, see, see. No. I mean, I, I, like I'm – yeah, I don't think I – I probably wouldn't have. I'm not against getting it and I'm not for getting it. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I think people should just come to their own conclusion about what they want to do. If you want to get the vaccine, get the vaccine. If you don't want to get the vaccine, don't get the fucking vaccine. It's that simple. But I understand another country saying, listen, if you want to come here, you need to be fully vaccinated against this. That's the, yeah. Protect our citizens. I'm like Cooper's wife, Cooper's wife, my sister-in-law is an RN, and she won't get it. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but she she she's a very smart lady. Your wife's a smart lady. There's a reason they don't want to get it. It's not because they're trying to be hard-headed. It's they want to know the science behind it, and I don't blame them. That's me. If I knew more about what the long-term effects were, I don't have a problem at all if they come out and said, hey, you need to have another polio vaccine or you got to have a measles vaccine or whatever. And I know that I could get that and die from it. I mean, anytime you get a a shot of any sort, there is a chance of a side effect. But it's it's got history with it and a lot of tests and trials. This COVID shit, we don't know what to expect. It's been on the market less than a year. So I'm I'm with your wife and them, and that's why. They're, they, they just don't, want, they don't know the long-term effects, and I don't blame them. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And, and that's like me. Like I was, you know, like I said, I wasn't against getting it, you know, and I wasn't all pro for it, but when it comes down to it, you, hey, you know what? I had to do this for work, sure. so I'm not going to complain about it. You know, I'm not going to make a big deal about it. It's something I had to do. If I didn't want to do it, you know, and was totally against it, then guess what? I'm not going to go to work. So I was just one of those things I had to do for to go up to Canada to get in to go to work and. That's what I was going to do. I, it's just like these young guys are trying to make football teams that are fifth and sixth round picks and free agent picks. They've got to have the vaccine or nobody's going to sign them. Well, you know what? Fuck it. I'm poor and I've busted my ass to get here. And if I got to get a fucking injection in my arm, go put some sperm in a freezer somewhere so you can have kids if it makes you sterile and go play football. That's what I would do. Right. If it come down to my job and making a living, I would do the same thing. Luckily, I'm not in that, that position, but I don't blame anybody that got a shot. I don't look down at people that have the shot. But, boy, there's sure a lot of people have had the shot look down at people like us that haven't had them. Oh, exactly. And I hope you're not one of them, Cooper, because. <laughs> no, not You're talking at all. to a couple unvaxxers I, here. Yeah. We're doing this over. Well, not, I, trust me, I know a lot more people that are unvaccinated than, than that are vaccinated. So, um, I know we've done this before, but my memory is shit. Where at in Canada is your is the place? Is it in western or eastern Saskatchewan? It. Oh, uh, we're on the eastern side. Eastern side. Yep, we're kind of. Yep, we're uh, one of our zones butts up to Manitoba. So I mean, we're, you know, we're we're pretty, pretty far east over there. Um, and then we stretch out and like uh, up by like the Quill Lakes. Okay, okay. Now, yep. did did anybody hunt up in up in your zones last year, or did it remain pretty well untouched? Oh, it's like just locals. Right. I mean, I can. I don't know if you know some Americans got across using work permits and did that whole thing. I have no idea with that, but none of us went up there. Um, And, you know, I just saw pictures online from Canadians and stuff like that hunting. So last year, I mean, would it have just been a total bust if you had relied on Canadian hunters to keep the ship afloat? Um, Well, we just don't have that many Canadian hunters. We don't have... We have none. I think we had one group that was going to book with us, and they ended up not coming through. So, I mean, ours is solely 
hundred percent Americans. Do they just do the Canadians just freelance up there? Is that why they don't yeah. book hunts? Yep, some of the majority of them do. You might get some from like the western provinces that'll come, or, or sorry, the eastern provinces that'll come to the western provinces, you know, um, that aren't used to hunting and stuff. And so that's where like some outfitters pick up those guys from. The hunt, the hunting numbers in the big cities, which is basically, I don't know much. I, I know Canada's geography, but Vancouver, Toronto, and Montreal probably make up seventy five percent of the whole population in Canada. And those areas are not real big with hunters, are they? No, not Pretty at all. liberal, big city shit. Yep. Yep, very liberal. Have you heard anything? So where you're at, that's drought-free? Mm, it's pretty dry. It? Yeah, it's pretty dry. Do y'all dry. have like a general manager that stays up there like year-round and takes care of the lodge and stuff like that? Uh, no, we don't. Well, not that. Uh, so the lodge, it's actually what it is. It's a like a giant bed and breakfast. Okay. So it sleeps. It's it's set up just like like one of our hunting lodges, where it has two bedrooms and its own bathroom, and it has twelve rooms, so it sleeps twenty four. So we just lease that out for the two months that we're up there. So it actually has Canadian ownership. Okay. So right now, like, is there anybody around up there that you can call and be like, hey, what's the water situation like? What's the birds? Have we got a good hatch? Yeah, there's some farmers that I talk to that have, you know, known for years. Talk to them. To Talk to the guy that owns the lodge. Um, We got a guy that scouts up there for us. So him, you know, so there's, there's a few connections that I have that we can talk to people and kind of figure out what's going on and all that. And I know it's dry up there. Um, I was worried that the crops were in, you know, bad shape, but supposedly they're not doing too terrible. That's one farmer I talked to said they're not doing too bad. Now, so with all things considering. Now, did you talk to anybody last year? What was the, what were the, were there birds everywhere? Like, was it going to be a fucking banger of a year? Had anybody been up there? Yeah. It was, yeah like the one guy that scouts for us up there. You know, he was just sending me text. He goes, oh, I just drove by a field loaded with honkers. Oh, I just drove by a field loaded with ducks. He's like, there's nobody up here hunting. It's so weird. Fuck. So That's got to be disheartening. But, I mean, they just pretty much had, you know, free reign of everything. No pressure. That's got to be disheartening. But, yeah. And there's not a ton of, you know, like Canadians that really do hunt, at least in our area, you know, waterfowl hunt. I mean, there's some, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing like the States, you know. Right. Not like where you find a roost close to a town that there's, you know, five or six groups trying to set up on it. Now, do, do y'all get like a big uh, snow goose migration in like October or anything? Or is it mainly just honkers and ducks? It's mainly honkers and ducks. We get some snows, but not very many. Not like out west of us, you know, where they're having those huge feeds of tens of thousands. And I mean, we in 19, we had, I think, two or three good snow goose hunts. Um, but other than that, that's about all we'll get a year. Now y'all, we don't really step on them that much. It's more of a bonus, you know. We'll go and find a field with honkers in it, and there may be a thousand snows. You'll get a crack or two out of them first thing in the morning, and then that's it. Y'all, y'all showed a bunch. Didn't Dusty Brown worked for y'all, didn't he up there? Y'all yep. shot a bunch of cranes up there too, don't y'all? That's yep, yep. We shoot shoot cranes early. I mean, really, they can be there for I don't know, probably the first two thirds of the season. And I mean, they, they can be really good then just, you know, how it is. It's got to have the right weather. What, what's the, hotter the better what's there. the limit on cranes up there? Is it three also? Five. Wow. Ooh. Yep. Five. That is, that is the new designer bird right now that everybody's wanting to shoot is a crane. It's oh, just yeah. crazy. I was, we were hunting cranes with my dad in the eighties and nobody else hunted cranes then hardly at all. And now everybody's a crane hunter. And the meanest things on earth. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they will whip your ass too. If you don't watch it. And not oh, and not even think twice about them. it. Um, but they're they're just they're not there very often. You got to time it right with the cranes. Well, I mean they're there. It just depends on the weather up there, you know, because it'll and it, when it's rainy and spitting, you know, and stuff like that out. They they don't ever leave the field. They just stay out there all day and loaf. Yeah. Um, but if you get it where it's dry and hot out, then they'll actually leave the field. So then you can go set up on them. Do y'all have? Unless you're hunting in the mornings, but you know, usually we'll try to. Usually, as a rule of thumb, we try to shoot honkers in the morning because the season closes at twelve noon every day, so you can only shoot them until twelve. So if we don't hunt honkers in the morning, then that takes them an option for the afternoon away. You know, like ducks or cranes or even snows. But 
on like a changeover day or something, we might, you know, hunt cranes in the morning if guys want to shoot them and haven't had a good one yet or shoot ducks. But usually on the full hunt days, we'll try to just shoot honkers in the morning and then go after the cranes and stuff. So it's got to be, you know, warm, dry, then they'll actually leave the field, go to water for a couple hours and you can go in there, set up on them, wait for them to come back. Otherwise, they just if it's raining or there's any precipitation at all, they just set out in that field all day. Well, they never leave. I bet you're a worn out, grouchy fucker come December and January because I used to have guides that worked for me that would go to Peace River and hunt and then come down. Fuck by Christmas, they weren't worth shooting. They wore out. Oh yeah, it is. Like the guys that go with me up there too that come back to the states and work at our other lodges. I mean, it's you know, so we go up usually like the 25th of August. And we'll run until, you know, I don't know, like the 21st or so of October. Then we get back, well, the season this year in Missouri for the North Lodge, I think, starts at the end of October. So they might have, you know, a week, 10 days. Well, you take a day or two to drive back. Then you get down there, get all your stuff unloaded. Then you got to touch up, you know, make sure everything's ready for the season and then roll into that. Then go all the way to January, pretty much. So... They get burnt out. They, they, I can see where and that. Then a lot of those guys do the do the spring snow goose. Yep. I mean, oh, uh, there. There's some of them stay and do the honker season in January, and then start setting spreads for snows, and then some go to Arkansas, and then some go and stay in Missouri. And it's it's, it's, it's a grind. You show me a guy doing that, and I'll show you a single guy. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, hundred <laughs> percent. Uh. Let's talk about something else that's going to affect the waterfowl. Ammunition. The guys that are spring snow goose hunting are going to be fucked this year, I think. I went to Academy yesterday in Wichita Falls, and I bought a gun, but I didn't go to buy a gun. But anyway, I, I was just was going in there to look at some shoes. I ended up buying some. They had 12 boxes of dove loads in the whole store. Not cases, boxes. Really? It is the 1st of August, basically. And usually they'd have three pallets full of, you know, people would be buying it by the case, $60 a case or whatever it is for dove loads. You can't find dove loads. If you can't find dove loads in July and August for September, how the hell do these people think they're going to have waterfowl loads? I've been telling everybody, you better get on the phone to Boss and get you some waterfowl loads now. And Boss is out of three inch right now, but you don't need to shoot three inch. Boss, you can shoot two and three quarter number threes and fives and be fine. But yes. What what are the, That's the snow? Crazy. It's just crazy to think, yeah, isn't it? It's fucking nuts. All over. Well, a, a lot of the shotgun shell problem is that all the new gun owners bought up all they they made bullets for nines and forties and all that shit. And that's where a lot of the ammun the the powders for. But yeah, it's hard to believe you can't buy shit in the country right now. And if you've got a spring snow goose hunt, I think people I think them guys are fucked this year. I really do on ammunition. Well, it's gonna be tough. It's definitely going to be tough. I Now, I heard, I don't know, it could have been a big lie, that, like, rifle and pistol ammunition is kind of coming there back. There was a lot of that yesterday. I bought, I don't know, I bought a yeah. couple of boxes of nines yesterday just to have to add to a stash that's going to get stolen if the government ever comes get them. I don't know why someone broke and stole all my shit. But, uh, right. yeah, there, there was a lot of ammunition. There was nines. There wasn't no 40s. There was nines, 308s, uh, 223 rounds and shit like that. But there was a lot of that there. But there wasn't no shotgun rounds at all. I mean, th- there was 12 boxes of seven and a halfs, and that was it. There wasn't a two, a four, a six. There wasn't nothing else left there. And I honestly haven't even really paid attention to it, you know. I mean, not that there's a ton of places to buy ammo around here, but I really haven't even paid attention. I just heard that from one of my buddies said, oh, you know, the pistol and rifle ammunition is coming back, so maybe the shotgun shells will, but I don't no, know. It's- like you said, I – I got a flyer this morning from Rogers. They have in their big waterfowl sale. Yes, this weekend, right? That they have like 3,000 cases of shotgun shells. Ooh. But who knows what that is. Right. Well, I, but they you better have some. You, you better stock up if you're there. I mean, it's it's. I was right. shocked, and I asked the guy at the gun counter, I said, do you not have any dove loads? He goes, no. He said, usually we have pallets of it by now. And he said, we don't even know if we're going to have any. That old boy that goes dove hunting in Texas on September 1st, which is the biggest hunter day in Texas. There are tens of thousands of dove hunters out on opening day throughout the state. A lot of them guys don't buy their license or their ammunition until the 31st, the night before. You can go to yeah, the night you before. go to any academy on August 31st, and there's a line of people buying licenses and shells. Which there ain't going to be no fucking shells to buy. 
I don't know why you would either. Get that motherfucker online. Yeah. That's kind of like you're seeing car commercials. Why the fuck is there a car commercial? You can't buy any fuck. You can't buy a new vehicle right now. Why are we seeing no. this shit on you television? Just can't, you can't buy anything. I went to get some golf cart batteries last oh, week. Yeah. Couldn't find them. <laughs> Called the interstate, the interstate store. He said, I'll, I'll be surprised if we have them in for next season. Jesus like, Christ. Great. <laughs> and, and, you can't, and you can't find a fucking worker. I saw an ad today. For, we have a local restaurant in Knox City that's not opening because they can't find workers. But we got the same fuckers getting on Facebook begging for money and shit all the time. You know, go get a fucking oh, job. Yeah. They're hiring. Tell them about your car fiasco. I don't we, think you've told this story on the podcast. We, yet. uh, Michelle has been wanting one of these three uh, row seat Jeeps, Grand Cherokee Limited L. We've had two Grand Cherokees, and we buy the one that's got all the bells and whistles, gives you everything but a blowjob driving down the road. The, and so we, she's been wanting this third seat one. So we, we, we looked at buying a new vehicle in March. And I saw these three seats. And I said, I said here's what's going to happen. We're going to buy this fucking vehicle. And then this three seat one's going to come out. And you're going to want this. And you're going to want to trade it in three months later. She says, oh, no, I want that three seater. So we ordered one in March. A black one with uh, brown leather. So we ordered it in March. Went and took our Jeep in, Wagoneer. And they gave us, told me what they'd give it to us. I said, now, when that comes in, we will stick with what we told you we'll give you for it. I said, that's fine. Ten weeks later, still hadn't got a vehicle that was supposed to be in a week later. Kept pushing it back, pushing it back. So, finally, two weeks ago, I get a text from a guy on Thursday morning, and he said, hey, has a picture. Your Jeep's here. I said, perfect. We'll be in to pick it up in the morning. I said, 10 a.m., is that good? That's perfect. I said, no problem at all. Would you like to put a deposit down on it? I said, I'm going to buy it in the morning. He said, okay, that's fine. So the next morning, get up, get a text from him. We're fixing to leave. It's 8.15, 8.30 in the morning. Right before we're fixing to leave, he texts me and says, oh, uh, they sold your Jeep last night. I'm fucking hot. I'm like, are you fucking serious? So I called him up. I said, you're fucking serious? Well, yeah, they, they, another salesman sold it. I said, I ordered that fucker. 10 weeks ago, and you told me that was mine. Yeah, but you didn't give us a deposit. I've bought two fucking vehicles off of you. Why the fuck would I give a deposit? You didn't tell me I had to give you a deposit. I've never heard of giving a fucking deposit on a vehicle. Well, that's just that's right. the way we do things now. I said, fuck that shit. Now, we're going to have three more next week. I said, well, I can assure you that I ain't ever buying a fucking vehicle from you ever again, and you can take that fucking Dodge dealership and shove it up your fucking ass. So... Then I got to deal with my wife, and anybody that's got a wife knows that's the worst fucking part. The vehicle deal wasn't as bad as him to deal with the disappointed wife. Because the reason they didn't pick it up that day, Jeff over here had his casino day all planned out. One day a week, I get to go do something, and that was one, that day. One fucking day a week. It's July, Jeff. You can go anytime. I know, but so, that's my day. J Thursday was his day, and they sell that fucking Jeep out from under. So that's why he's worried about having to deal with my, my mom, not... So so not because she's going to be disappointed. Oh, she was disappointed. Yeah, because you didn't go pick up the Jeep so, that day. So the next, so I get on the phone in a place in Vernon. Tony had just bought a brand new pickup. It's fifty mile, an hour north of us, basically. Had just bought a brand new pickup. Tony goes, call those guys. They have a Jeep deal too. Call them. We just got one in today on the truck. I said, what color is it? It's white with tan leather. So I asked Michelle. <laughs> And I like the white. White or black, I didn't care. I didn't care anyways what color we got. So Michelle's like, yeah. I, she shows her the picture. She goes, that's fine. I'll take it. I said, okay. He said, I think we'll give you a little bit more on your trade-in too. So I had to send him a picture of the VIN, send it to him, picture the the Jeep's clean. It's like we 50,000 miles and not a scratch on the damn thing. So they gave us almost, almost what we paid for the damn thing. They gave us a hell of a deal for it. So we drive up there, and he, he texts me back and forth, and he goes, would you like to put a deposit down? Well, fuck yeah, I do. I ain't going through this shit again. I said, what is a deposit on a Jeep? Do I have to? I didn't know if I had to wire him some money. He goes, no, no, no. We just need a credit card and run it for $500. That's fine. Took a picture of my card, sent it to him, and um, we're on our way. We're going to be there at 2 o'clock. So he calls me 10 minutes before 2, and he says, Mr. Stanfield, we got some bad news. I go, what's the bad news? Well, that thing's stuck in transport mode. I have no fucking clue even what that means. I go, what's that mean? Well, we got to have a tool to get it out of transport mode, and we don't have one yet, but they have one in Wichita Falls, and we're going to have to take it there to have it done. I said, that's fine. I said, I'll come by there. We're in Vernon. I'll sign the paperwork. Then we'll drive to Wichita, and I'll just pick it up there. Well, we, we, we don't know if we can get it today. It may be Monday. This is on a Friday. I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come by and sign paperwork for it. 
You can do it, and then on Monday, I'll come up here and pick it up, or you can drop it off to me at my house. I don't think that's asking too much if I'm buying a $60,000 fucking vehicle for someone to bring it to your house and deliver it. So he's like, well, let me talk to my boss to find out. So five minutes later, he calls me back. He said, well, we can have you sign the papers on it and stuff, but we can't let you take your vehicle home. Once we sign papers on it, that's ours, and you can't drive it home. I go, this is fucked up. This dude tells me, he said, I don't understand what the problem. It's been a pretty seamless transition. How the fuck is that seamless? I've, I've done the <laughs> financing already. I've got a vehicle bought, the second one of the day I've bought. I'm bringing you my vehicle and leaving it to you, but I can't take the new vehicle home. How the fuck is that seamless? Well, you don't have to be upset. <laughs> so in the meantime, my wife has found there's a place in Henrietta, which is the other side of Wichita Falls, another hour away. And they've got one in stock. So I called the guy up, and I said, you have one in stock? Yes. Can I drive it? Well, yeah, why couldn't you? Well, the last one's in transport mode. I didn't realize when they ship vehicles, they're not drivable. They have a, they got to hook them up to a computer and do some shit so people don't steal them. So anyways, we go to Henrietta, and we buy our third Jeep of the day that afternoon, and we drive it home. But fucking buying a car is fucking as hard as fucking anything in the world. It's as hard as getting into Canada now. No. Yeah. It, go, where you guys live in north texas but they didn't have any of these vehicles because they're brand new and and that's why the vernon people didn't have it it's the first one and they got to have a computer i guess for every vehicle that's a new vehicle and it was the first one they'd ever had of this but that's not as hard as fucking trying to book a room on hilton honors i called to book a room the other day for somewhere me and mom are going and fucking got to deal with the damn lady at home and i can hear her kids screaming the whole fucking time i go are you working from home yes i'm sorry is my kid loud well fuck yeah sounds like i'm calling a romper room <laughs> this is fucking, this whole country is fucked up now this is where we're living at now cooper yeah so get this my wife uh we used to have a durango and she hated it wasn't big enough right so we got a tahoe in the spring last spring maybe yeah last spring and it was like picture perfect seamless like you said you know you couldn't take it home all that hell they drove it out to our house just to take it for a test drive Jeez. and then she's like yeah i want it the kid came back the next day with the tahoe we filled out all the paperwork they took our car left that was it. Cust- customer service even have to go to town and we live like 15 minutes from the deal yeah, that, wow. that's called customer service and that's the way things you should be yeah and I couldn't believe that. I'm about yeah. a $60,000 fucking vehicle from you. I don't know what a car dealership makes on that, but you would have thought the guy would have said, hey, drive your vi- – it's it's insured. If we total the motherfucker, it's not like they're not getting paid. Take your car home. Right. We'll bring it to you. Then this is the kicker. Both fucking car dealers called me on Monday. We, we, we That one guy goes, well, we got that thing out of transport mode if you want it. Fuck you. I ain't buying shit from you. <laughs> then the other guy calls me and says, we got three more of those in. I say, I ain't buying shit from you. Well, I hope it's not something we done. Well, fuck yeah, it is. You sold my Jeep. <laughs> Out from under me. Yeah, if you'd have told me to give a fucking deposit, I'd never even heard of Have you ever heard of putting a deposit down on a vehicle before? No, I had never have. I've never heard of that. It had financing and everything done. It's sold. They know it's bought. The the best. Especially since you ordered yeah. it. The best part is, is during all this, he's having to call our the insurance agent, telling them, you know, hey, I don't have this. You got to put it on that. So the insurance <laughs> agent. Is like, I know you're having a bad day, but there's another guy in town that bought a brand new Duramax, went there, signed the paperwork, all that good stuff. They told him it would be there in a week. And for some reason, he. No, got, he, when he went there to buy it, it was, supposed, it was there, supposedly. It was going to be there the next day. No, but, it was that day. And no, so when they, he got there, they told him, well, it'll be in the truck tomorrow. When he went there, the vehicle was there to purchase. Mm-hmm. He, they said, yeah, your truck's here. I'm going to buy it. He did all the thing online, got there, signed the papers, waiting for his truck to come up. We got a problem, sir. Your truck didn't come in on the truck today like it was supposed to. It'll be here tomorrow. You may finish this right go, go And so then he says, okay, they said, just drive home. We'll bring it to you. So he goes home, calls him. It didn't come in today. Three days later, he calls again. Your truck's still not here. to be here next week. Some delays. This went on for three weeks. He got a fucking bill from GMAC for the financing to make a payment on the truck he still hadn't gotten. So he calls and talks to the manager. The manager's like, he's like, listen, I just want my fucking truck. I'll come get my old truck back. I'm not going through this shit. Well, sir, let me be honest with you. Your truck was here that day, but we sold it right before you got here to someone else. And there was supposed to be another truck just like yours come in the next day, and it didn't. But 
we've got a truck the same color you want, but it doesn't have the heated seats and this and that. So they had to take all a bunch of new shit out of another pickup, put it in his truck to leave. And what? Jeez. And people wonder why fucking car salesmen are fucking nobody likes them cocksuckers. Can you fucking imagine? But they don't have nothing to God. sell. You drive by a car lot down here. I don't know about where you're at, but there's not three vehicles for sale on a car lot here. You can't. You can't. There's nothing. yeah. There's not been here. We we go to we go to you know Wichita Falls or something and like you drive past almost all the car lots and nothing on it. But yeah, sold his fucking pickup. Three weeks later, they come clean like your pickup was here. We sold it that morning when you were signing papers. We thought we were gonna get another one that next day and it never came in. So my bad. Oh man, I've been hot. I've been like, I just want my money back. Just fuck this whole deal. But that fucking salesperson, when they fucking called me that Monday after that shit was over, I guess when most people tell you to stick that car lot and stick it up your ass, they don't mean it. I fucking meant it. I drove by fucking one of them yesterday and flipped the motherfuckers off, honked and flipped off as I drove by. It pissed me off still. (laughs) Just because the ass chewing I had to get for that 30 fucking minutes. Well, Jeff, had you just put your casino plans on hold and gone and got the car, it wouldn't have been no big deal. I have my days. Okay, you you say that all the time. If mom would have been going shopping that day, that would have been her day, and she wasn't going to change her plans either. Oh, I guarantee you she would have for that car. She loved it. Well, she's got one, so I'm still driving an old truck. I ain't buying. I'm just gonna be, I've been going to buy me a new fucking pickup for three months, and I'm not buying one now until this shit's over with. Old Blackie runs good. I don't need one. It looks like shit anyways after everybody's scouting and shit. So let me ask you this. You're going to Canada. Are you coming yep. to Game Fair? Or are you going to go straight? Are you going Are you going to come to Canada to Game Fair? Oh uh, nope, we're uh we're be up there. We're we're gonna leave on the twenty fifth. So well, game fair is the twenty second. Oh, that yeah, yeah, you can't I, do that. No, yeah, no, that would take some it. balls to do that shit. Your wife would be really impressed. Yeah. No. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. No uh, fucking. You, I don't even want to go there. You thought the car thing was bad. Imagine <laughs> me leaving early. Oh, I'm gonna go to yeah. game fair. Sorry, no. I'll be gone for two months. I'm just gonna skin out a few Fuck days. Fuck that shit. <laughs> People that darn in the hunting business, they don't understand because. Michelle, I can really tell, and I've seen Jesse Andy's wife too. They don't really appreciate sometimes when you're doing stuff because you make a living doing something you enjoy. You know, like that's right. our fault. We decided to find something we like to make a living at. And <laughs> right, and, and exactly. I have, there are times that I know that Michelle has been like, "Well, why are you doing that?" Well, it's part of work. And and I know she's wanting to say, "Well, fuck that. You like what you're doing. It's not like you're going to work. You're enjoying your day." Well, shoot me. But I know as a guide, have you ever had a day that you went on a fun hunt on your day off and your wife got mad at you? Oh, I was just going to say yep. that. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, I'm going to go hunt with a couple buddies today. I'm back home or something. You know, you're only home for five days. <laughs> Why do you need to go hunting? You've been hunting for the last two months. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I've been at work for two fucking months. This is a day off. I'm doing my thing. Right. Yeah. yeah they, they, they have a, sometimes they have a hard time understanding. But yeah, that's yeah. Which I get it, no, yeah. yeah. I mean, you gotta you gotta find that right balance, and yeah. they should have found something they like to do for a living. Then my wife does. No, she doesn't all the time. I hear. Well, her bitch. I don't like fucking guiding all the time. I, I've never heard you bitch about having to go to work. <laughs> I, I've never You're heard you fucking high no, right I, now. I haven't. I've heard you complain about some of the things that happened in the day, but I've never heard you bitch about. God dang, I got a guy to hunt. You don't say that. Nobody does it hunts well, and guides. But women will bitch about their jobs or other people that do their things. There's a doctor right yeah. now that's going into surgery like, fuck, should have done something else besides fucking reconstruct knees all day long. This is the dumbest shit I've ever done in my life. That day I, I had a fucking golf. crane hunt in the rain, I was questioning my entire <laughs> life. Every decision I'd fucking made up to that point. So, yes, there are plenty of days where I'm like, God, do fucking mighty. There's someone listening to this right now that has zero sympathy for you. I promise they you. They shouldn't. They do. But, I, I mean, do you think that a professional athlete bitches sometimes about the shit that they got to do? They're making millions of dollars. Of course they do, Jeff. But they took a right career path. Some people make good career path decisions. We did if we're in the hunting business. You know, we may be poor, but we made fucking good damn decisions on enjoying our life. Cooper's not poor, Jeff. Well, uh, Cooper's running a big operation in Canada. That's where all the money's at. Everybody knows that. Cooper's vaccinated. He's not poor. Yeah, he's making all the jacks. <laughs> free vaccination <laughs> so and he's married to a nurse yeah rolling in the dough right i can tell we, work we already figured out what, what where cooper's tax bracket is when the motherfuckers are delivering fucking escalades Cars. to your house 
Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Just, we know yeah. right away. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. they judge Cooper's house size and saw where he was. And they're like, well, listen, whatever you need, we'll deliver. The, the big money in Jewel, Iowa is at Coop's house. Yeah. Really? It's, it's, it's at the Olmstead house. So you got a house at Clear Lake also, right? Yeah, too. There you go. <laughs> no wonder you hang yeah. out with Logan Pyatt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so August 25th, you're less than a month away. Are you, uh, yep. Are you nervous? Are you going to be on pins and needles the whole time, like just waiting for the whole fucking house of cars to come collapsing down? Or once you get up there, will you be fine? Yeah, I don't know. I'm always am. I'm always a nervous wreck. Just going up there, getting across the border, doing all that. And now it's even worse because I don't know. I'm just scared to death that we're going to spend, you know, all this money, get all the clients, you know, ready and – their hopes are going to be up, of course, you know, because they can finally go after two years, and then all of a sudden it's going to close or something's going to happen, and they're not going to let you cross, or I don't know. Because, like, that's the thing it's, is just because you get up there doesn't mean that right. mid-September they're like, no, like, this is not working. There's a rise in COVID cases. Let's shut her down again. Right, and they could do that. Just, you know, we could be sitting up there with guys in camp, and they could be like, oh, we're shutting her down. There's been a spike in COVID cases. Yeah, I would I would not do well because I think you and me kind of have the same nervous shit. Yeah, it just makes you a nervous wreck. It does. It, and you want it to go, you know, smoothly and everything to be fine. And I just I I don't know if it's going to happen. I want to say yes, it is. If everything's going to be perfect, and but you just have that feeling down in your gut, you know, like it's not going to take much to swing it the opposite way. Right. Right. It's it's like they're looking for a reason to have it go the opposite way. Right, exactly. What are what are people going to have to do to get back home? Do they have to submit a, a COVID test while they're in Canada before they can come back to the United States, or can they just come home? Not that I've heard. Not that I've heard. I think it's just to get across into Canada. <clears throat> and then anything do after that is fine. Within 72 hours. Yep. Yep. Now, there's no quarantine, none of that. You just submit your negative COVID tests 72 hours before, Correct. and you're free to go. No yep. quarantine, nothing. Yep. That's, I mean, that's everything that I've read and heard. But, you know, there's been stuff earlier on, too, that said, oh, you're going to have to quarantine. And, but they haven't said any of that since they released the border opening it, that date. Canada <laughs> doesn't have the state's rights that we do, right? Is that correct? What do you what, what, do what do you mean? We have each state in the United States has a lot of states' rights and stuff that we get. We have. Oh, like, like, uh, like nor- you know, I don't believe so. Yeah, so they don't they don't have all the the freedoms that we have. Like so, like with Florida being open, but New York State being yes. shut down. And Trudeau goes in and yeah. says everything's fucking stu- shut everything. down and everything shuts down. Saskatchewan can't play by different rules right. than Manitoba or anything then, like, like Ontario or something like that. Yeah, I believe you're correct. I don't know 100 percent for sure, but. I think that's right. I think to where that that whole prime minister stuff comes in, you know. Yeah. Like like we live in Texas, and then we hunt in Oklahoma also. Well, those are going to be two of the last states you're ever going to fucking shut down. Complete. I mean, it just ain't going to happen. It's going to be bad, bad when they do. And like most of the Midwest is that way. Yeah. I, I was really, really shocked last year that places like California and New York and some of them places still got to hunt. I really was because I know how them fucking governors overreach on shit, and I thought they would shut some shit down. And I still, and I'm sticking to this, I think with fucking Democrats running the federal government right now, that the federal, a lot of the federal refuges and shit are going to get shut down, but they're not going to let hunters on. I just, I think it's coming down the road eventually. But we have states' rights, and I don't think in Canada they have those states' rights with guns and all kinds of shit. And that's going to be a big player over the years with them. Yeah, I don't think they do either. I know, uh, I think it was last fall in New York, they did something where if you were from a certain state, you couldn't hunt there. Right. Non-residents. Yeah, I think I remember, yeah, like the travel ban and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, residents from certain states when, you know, there was spikes everywhere, or, you know, in certain areas, hotbeds or whatever, that they shut down non-resident hunting to those states. I think Texas was one of them. For what I, I think it was too, and because I, I think Iowa was too, because we had a huge spike because of when the colleges went back. Yeah. Um. So, <clears throat> how do you what what do do you guys don't mess with any of the clients' travel, right? What, what all no, do you the, provide? No. You just shotgun shells. Yeah, you know, we pretty much 
they're responsible for getting themselves up there and we kind of handle the rest. So like we have shotguns, shotgun shells, you know, bird cleaning, their licenses, of course, you know, meals, lodging, all that stuff. So they just pretty much have to get there. So that's at least one thing that you're not going to have to worry about is the headache of getting them there. Now, I'm right. sure that I'm sure everybody's going to have your phone's probably going to be blowing up constantly while you're up there with guys that are coming up. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean just Yeah, it does. Well, All the, it's I'm on my phone a lot. And it's just it's probably just the same questions all the time. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, because I'm sure you guys have the same way. You have a group with the head of the group, yep. right? You know, that you're like main point of contact and everything. And then, you know, you have however many X amount of guys under them. So everybody has questions, you know, which I don't blame them at all, especially guys that have never done it before or came before. They're all going to have questions. So you get, you know, instead of having just one guy, you know, you might have five or six or eight or however many guys contacting you. So how do most people do it? Do do most, do they get like a a big van that comes to the lodge or do most, do they get their own vehicle? You know, it just, it all depends. I mean, it's, we have everything, you know, we have guys that will fly up and then rent, you know, a vehicle or two. Um, We've had guys that have brought, you know, like RVs up before that, you know, there'll be a whole group of them. They'll, drive an RV up. Um, some people drive their own vehicles. Um, some fly private and rent vehicles, you know, it's just a little mix of everything really. Right. Um, that's when you're living the good life. When you fly private. Oh yeah. I'm going to take my jet and go to Canada for a couple of days. You know, just do shit like that. That's that Cooper money right there. That's, that's that's that Olmstead money. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. I don't even know what a private jet looks like. (laughs) So, (laughs) Yeah, so um, we're we'll start wrapping up here because I know you're. I got court. Oh, you got court, huh? Yeah. Oh shit, Jeff. Who who's on the docket today? I don't. I can't talk about that shit, Jeff. It's against the law, Andy. Just tell us. No. Are you in a good mood today or a bad mood today? I'm always in a good mood in court. Oh. I'm a very forgiving person. So August 25th, you'll be back around what Halloween? A little bit before Halloween. Yeah, before I'm just. I don't know how our bookings are going to be, you know, if we get, if we're full, I think we go to like the 18th or 21st now. And then if we get, you know, more interest, we'll just add them on a few more days. So now is there going to be like another announcement or has what we seen <clears throat> from Canada, is that final or, or are they waiting for like another? Well, that's, that's what they said. It's going to open August 9th. So I guess on August 9th, there will be <clears throat> another announcement. Like they have that, I was telling you about that Arrive Canada app, you know, that you can get on and put, uh, download your vaccination card and stuff like that. Right now, if you get on it, it's got like a questionnaire you can fill out and it, it'll, it'll tell you that you're not admissible to Canada. But on August 9th, once the border opens, when you answer those questions, it should say that you're, you know, free and clear, you can enter the country. Well, I hope everything goes good for you guys and I hope there is no problems. I hope that we, I just... I'm at a three right now, and I hope I get to six. Six point six, baby. And I oh, hope don't to, fucking ride the fence, Jeff. No, I'm not on the fence. Three says I don't. No, think you it's said you, you said you hope you can get up to my level. Okay, I would not be a level. I would go above Andy's level. I hope I get to eight or nine, and it happens. I hope I see pictures of you in the spread killing birds in Canada with clients. Is what I hope happens. I do. Hey, me. And 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 I'm and I'm pulling for every outfitter up there. It's a tough business, and it damn sure don't need to be shut down for a second year. I just don't trust our government. And especially we're dealing with something new. And I think after Delta, we're going to have another one. And then it was going to be forever. I just don't. Do you think that this would have been, do you think that enough, there was enough financial aid last year for outfitters in Canada to stay afloat? Or or is it still going to be tough even with this opening? I don't know. I I think it's got to be tough still. I don't think, I don't know what they, you know, gave out or how much there was or what. I mean, because you got to look at all the fishing side too. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of fishing guides that were affected as well. So, I don't know. That's a lot of money you're talking about to spread between fishing guides, hunting guides, all that. Yeah, we're just thinking about the waterfowl industry. We don't think about the fishing or the elk or the bear and them guys. Yeah, I mean, game. And, and, and the sad thing is, it's not affecting people in fucking Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. It's mm-hmm. affecting Knox City, Texas of Canada is all over the place. Right. That's, that's that's the people that have gone without, and it's killing them. And another year of it is it's just it's a horrible deal. 
the fucking Chinese, they ought to, they ought to have to pay everybody for all this bullshit. <laughs> It's, it's a bad deal, and it's no way to do this and not make it political because it's been political. And the sad thing is last year, y'all could have hunted, and it would have made no fucking difference. Mm -mm. Right. There, would have not. No. If everybody in America would have just kept doing what they did, we wouldn't have any – we would have had very – we would have probably had far lesser deaths than we had because we would have had some herd immunity to this shit. Because in Texas, we've been going like regular, and I'm assuming y'all have in Iowa. Yeah, we have. I couldn't honestly – well, minus going to the doctor, you know, but I couldn't tell you the last time I wore a mask. I have to look for one so I can get on a fucking airplane. I had to go get one. I have to get it again. And I wash my mask. That's how hygienic it is or whatever the word would be. Michelle puts it in the washer. It's a cotton mask that I wear that's a cloth one. There ain't nothing fucking safe well, about it or sanitary. And, I mean, it's not just that. Like, so many people just sat in their houses, and then when they did get COVID, like, they weren't. There's so many studies that show if you got sunshine and you were out in the open air, you did much better when you had COVID. But so many people just got COVID and were fucking quarantined in their house and they, they just wasted away. Uh, it's a fucked up deal. I, I do. I hope everything, I hope this year everything kind of goes back to normal. I hope you guys can get y'all's feet back on the ground and, and just all the outfitters up there because a lot of people have pumped yeah. their life, life savings into this. And, you know, oh, for, yeah. The big ones are the fishing outfitters. Yeah. Yeah. They're. they're <laughs> Two seasons, you know. Yeah, they've missed. Last summer they quit, and then this summer. Yeah, they've two years in a row that shit. What scares me is California is a trendsetter for our country, and now they're going back to mask and shutting shit all down again. And I just, I really, that scares the piss out of me. Knox City, Texas, we will be open. We won't, we will not shut down. So I'm telling you right now, and I'm assuming you boys in Missouri are going to do the same thing. Yeah, we're uh, we're going to keep going. Yep. Well, Cooper, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Um, we're not gonna see a game fair. You got to spend time with the wife. So, I know we'll miss you there, buddy. But be safe on the road, and I hope everything goes well. And we'll see you at Squad Fest next summer. Yes, absolutely. Post those pictures up, and I hope it's a great, uh, great waterfowl season for you, bud. So, we'll. All right, guys. Thanks. I appreciate. We'll talk it. to you down the road. See you, bud. Bye. All God right. bless you. Bye. Damn it! I almost had it. Um, Cooper Olmstead. You know he's talking about that portal. That, uh, Canada or whatever, um, to opt out of the fucking tax credit for children. Did y'all get it done? It's the biggest fucking nightmare. I think so. But what? if you wanted the money, that's when you should jump through the hoops. I agree with you on that. Not to get out of but getting the money. You sound like a, a, a conservative white guy when you talk this way because they're saying... It's too hard for people that need that money because they don't have they they don't have access oh, to photocopiers. And stuff. You don't do any. You don't have a no, photo. But that's the way the government. You do, the, you do a fucking face scan and all this other shit. It's just it was thirty minutes of just. But the you government to pull your fucking hair out. The government thinks everybody that's wanting government money is uneducated and can't do shit. So that's why they're saying that, no, 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 we're not going to make it hard for the people that need the money. If you want to opt out, then by God, you can go through these hoops. Because the other people are too uneducated to do that, they think. It was fucking so, hell. So let, let me and, ask you, do they just put the money in your account each month? Is that how it works? No, we got a check. So they send you a check. We When we did our taxes, our accountant asked us, do you want, do you want this tax credit? You're going to have to pay it back. It's going to go, you know, if you have to pay anything, you're also going to have to pay this back. We said, no, we don't want it. Well, evidently, yeah. everybody, because my cousin also, yeah, I saw Eric they opted about out it. when they did their taxes. They also got a check. So, evidently, everything that we did with our accountant was for naught, and everybody's getting these fucking tax credits, and everybody, if you don't want it, has to jump through these hoops and do the face scan and the recognition and all that other bullshit to not get fucking money from the government. What people don't understand is is that you you were getting five fifty a month, right, for two kids? Is that yep. right? So you're going to get sixty six hundred dollars. May uh, that's twelve I read, times five fifty. I read that it was only going to be August to December. Okay, so six months you were getting thirty three hundred dollars. Right. So out of that thirty three hundred dollars, the people that have Christmas in February, I call it the people that don't have no jobs that have seven kids that get ten thousand dollars back every year. Right. They're of, not of tax get. refund, which is not a fucking refund because they don't pay that in. They're instead of getting ten or eight thousand dollars, they're only getting two or three thousand dollars. 
right. they're going to be bitching and wondering where all their money's at. Well, you're spending you, it every month. Motherfucker, you got it in August to December. So I don't and, and see, I don't have a problem with those people getting that money. I don't either. To pay their bills, but re- realize you're not going to the people are going to get money back. People that right. are paying don't want it cuz you just can't pay that fucking shit back. Correct. And we pay anyway, so like instead of paying what we would pay if we took this money, we would have to write a check to the government for even more money. So we're like, fuck this. We'll use it as a deductible. I want to go ahead and tell you now, I want to pray for the people that are really going to hurt out on this. There's people that are really going to be hurting by this. And it's some fuckers that had them you tote the note car lots but that, that sell the $5,000 <laughs> vehicle and they sell it for $300 a month at 27% interest to the people that can't get credit nowhere. Right. Those fuckers sell a shitload of cars in February and March to those people. They're not going to have nobody to sell cars to because nobody's going to have their big income tax checks. But I don't, I don't know that this was, I don't know that anybody told people like what this is. Like, well, I'm sure the government you're don't gonna they have, want you to control this, you. This is a credit. Right. This is not, this is not a gimme or anything like that. You're getting the money that you would normally get in February or March. You're getting it in increments now. I'm sure a lot of these people think, fuck, it's $500 of free money. Well, just yeah, like all these bailouts were. No, 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 no. That, I'm telling February, you. February, March, you get to pay that shit back. I'll, I'm a member of a Facebook page that is a page out of Dallas that takes care, shows crime shit all the time. So I watch it. But once a week. They have a guy that comes on and talks about stimulus checks and shit from the government. And the questions these people ask, these people that are on that page, other than me, think the government owes them something every fucking day. They want fucking money for their air conditioning. They want money for this. They want money for that. Them fuckers think they have the right to live in an apartment with an air conditioner and to have an electric bill of $20 a month because the government's going to pay most of their electric bill. They're going to get free food. They're needing another stimulus check. And they get free braces for their kids and free cell phones. And that's the America that lives in those big cities. And that's the people that voted for fucking Joe Biden. And that's what they expect. Is there going to be another stimulus? Uh, they shouldn't be. But there probably will be. There will be. I, I, well, they'll be. They want something free forever. But they ask on there every day, well, when are we getting another? Aren't we getting a fourth stimulus check? What oh, fucking sure. for? Go get a J-O-B. <laughs> that would be too easy, Jeff. Yeah, I know. You be. get a stimulus check every week. All right, I got to go to my other J-O-B. Well, Jeff, did you know that it is statistically proven that if you go see the judge after he's had a hearty meal, that you got a better chance at getting bail? I haven't eaten today. Well, I'm not sitting bail. I hope there's going to be some. I, there's going to be some locked to up go, motherfuckers. If I have to go sit some bail today, it's some unwarranted stuff because nobody knows. I don't know nothing about it yet. But it so is. So I will be shocked if you see the judge after lunch. You, I think it's like sixty percent. You got a sixty percent shot, better shot at getting bailed out than you do if you see him before lunch when he's hungry and if you if you climb a motherfucker it does not help your bail at all no that probably (laughs) probably doesn't help either all right god bless see y'all later bye go check out all of our great sponsors thank you to cooper for coming on and answering all of our questions uh check out shin gear waiters pacific calls dive bomb industries boss shot shells dirty duck coffee lucky duck looking glass duck club Gundog Outdoors, Goose Creek Retrievers, Bangtail Whiskey, Eyesight Drone Service, and Stanfield Hunting Outfitters. 